car scene. Go, go, go first. That's because it's from the 60s. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. All right. Hey y'all, uh, Phil Freedom here, and I am at the bee's knees with my friend Julia, and I just wanted to ask her a few questions, experiment with this camera, and just kind of get comfortable documenting. So, if you wouldn't mind uh, introducing yourself. <laughs> um, Am I supposed to look at the camera? Or you... A little, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just stare at it like that, but, you know. That's where people are going to be able to see you from. Okay. So, uh, your name and where are you from and what was your career? So, my name is Julia Fournier. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Born at St. Joe's Hospital. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then what was your career? Well, uh, you mean after waiting tables and Peace Corps and that kind of stuff? Uh, babysitting. <laughs> um, I was an educator for 30 years, mostly in Phoenix Public Schools. I forgot about the Peace Corps. Where were you at in the Peace Corps? Honduras. Honduras, and what were you doing there? I was supposed to be, at the age of 21, I was supposed to be starting the first uh, s special ed classroom, uh, resource center is what we used to call them. In a public school in the country. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then you. It didn't, it didn't happen. And then you came back and um, became an educator. Well, I was I I had graduated from ASU, in the College of Education, with a degree in um, with a dual certification, dual degree in um, special ed and elementary ed, and so then uh, instead of getting a job, I, well, I mean, it was a job to go in the Peace Corps, but getting a job in a school, I applied for the Peace Corps, because I, I really wanted to, I didn't want to just go right into education, into a school, and, like, be stuck in the school for the rest of my life, so it just seemed like a good time to do something, like, join the Peace Corps, and my dad and his parents were very had very strong ideas about service and how important service was, so. Nice, that's cool. And then, yeah. but you came and worked back here at an elementary school? I spent most of my year, I, I taught for three years in Guadalupe, in um, the Yaqui community. And then I, I taught, I did teach six, three years in Colorado. When I got back from the Peace Corps, there were no jobs in Arizona in Phoenix. So I got a job teaching in, Col in Grand Junction, Colorado. I taught there for three years and then I came back here. I taught for three years in Guadalupe and then I think 21 years in um, right right down the street in Creighton School District at Mackin School on 22nd in Virginia. And then you became a librarian? I did. I was, I was a media specialist. Which is for, the librarian, but okay. handle help all the media at a school, help with all the media? Yeah, they're trying to change the name of librarian to media specialist because, you know, the focus for the, the library was changing to not just books. Yeah. I remember seeing you at uh, ASU Prep. You were the librarian there for a year, is that right? Yeah. When my kid was there, and I was like... Yeah, I was hired 10, to be the librarian ago. there. And then they, um, so you know the whole story about that, right? The yeah, guy, yeah, the guy died. <laughs> the guy with the vision died like the, the day after the, they opened? The, the, he, no, the day before they opened, he died. The guy with the vision for the school and the guy who knew where all the money was going to come from, he died the day before the school opened. So they didn't, just didn't have money. They, they didn't know how to pay for for everything and they didn't know how to pay me after the first year Crazy. so I went back into the classroom for my last for my that was my last year teaching all right so we're actually in uh, my old sewing studio that I had for about two years that you let me rent in exchange for trade for working at the bee's knees on Sundays and it's funny because I was able to get one of 
someone that stopped into the sewing studio to actually take my hours and work there for a little while. That was kind of funny. But um, there's been a lot of um, projects and artists and businesses that you guys have supported through this space. And you've also had um, a number of gallery shows. So I just wanted to ask you to open up about the hive and the vision behind the hive in general. How we came to have the hive. Yeah. So uh, my ex-husband Steve uh, wanted was looking for a building for a really long time, and it was very it's very competitive. And um, he found a couple of spaces downtown. Um, maybe maybe they were both on um, Grand Avenue, and someone paid cash before he could uh, complete the sale. So. Uh, one of his clients found this place, and it's so weird because it's only like three blocks from from where we lived for, uh, I guess we must have lived there uh, 25 years before we bought it. We never knew this building existed, and it's um, really cool, built in 1959 um, block. Uh, it was built as a insurance building. And it's a great interior courtyard. It's a great mid-century design. So it had a lot of potential. And one of the things um, Steve thought that he wanted to do was have a gallery and a resale shop um, because, of the, because art and um, thrifting and clothing are things I really liked. And um, Steve's a painter and an architect. And so we just started that way, and just it just kind of it was very organic. Like we didn't plan for any of the business that, businesses that came here. Um, the f first person that rented from us is, pro and he he was also the, one of the last to leave. Um, Monty Fuse. He just walked in one day when Steve was out working. Uh, on something and asked about it and so they took the women's restroom and made it into a, a dark room and studio for Monty and uh, so we only had one restroom that was co what do you call it co-use co-use whatever <laughs> uh, we just had a restroom we didn't have a men's and women's restroom um, and uh, that's now the coffee shop, but uh, and then we had a coffee shop guy come in. We had, and that's over the years. It's just it's been not lots. Of what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> what? I know it is. All right, I can put that up. We're good. All right. Okay. Um, so over the years, we've had coffee shops. Um, I mean, lots of different things, but we none of it was planned. It was just there was space. And someone would walk in and say, can I have the space? It was never really planned. And then as far as the, the art gallery goes, the Hive gallery, that was, um, it started out with ASU wanting space for during one of the art detours. And then um, after that, we had somebody asked to do a show. So it, at the beginning, there was no planning the shows. And then it became obvious that um, we needed to be more intentional about it. So I started booking ahead by a year. So I'd say for, for most of the 10 years, the, the shows were planned uh, a year in advance. And then... Um, but we had uh, lots of community shows, like the we had um, group shows, kids shows, the Coronado neighborhood art show. So lots of different shows over the years. Okay, so you, um, you had the bee's knees at the front of the hive for a long time, and now you've sold the building and you've stayed on mm -hmm. board and made your shop just this, the room that we're in now. Mm -hmm. Um, so, what is it yeah. about resale uh, that you enjoy? So, I think I really like fashion. Like, when people ask me, well, first of all, there are a lot of changes that happened in 2020. You know, divorce, pandemic, sold the building. I just wasn't ready to just 
uh, you know, I moved into a different, pl a different place to live. I just wasn't ready to change everything. I still wanted to have my hobby job. So, <laughs> um, but like, as far as fashion goes, you know, it's, I got to blame my mom for it because my mom, she was really into fashion and design. She was quite, uh, quite a, she was really beautiful. My mom probably could have been a model. But she, uh, we would, she would sit next to me and read books to me. And then she'd be like, okay, now let's look at Vogue. And then we'd look at Vogue together. And she'd make me choose and talk about what I liked. And so, you know, I just was always really into it. And I couldn't, I didn't have the money as a kid to buy what I, what I wanted. Like my eye in Vogue. So I was, I was going, riding my bikes to thrift stores when I was like 12 years old to find the things I wanted. Like I wanted cashmere beaded sweaters. <sighs> Why? So um, I, I just like, I like, what I really like um, finding great design, um, well made um, from designer focused um, manufacturers and um, and finding them I, I shop very carefully try to buy at a good price so I can mark them up just enough to make a profit and so when people come in here they still think they're getting a great a great deal for what they're buying um, so I don't know I just really like it <laughs> I like I like clothes um, I like the detail and the color, the cut, yeah, it's just cool. it's fun. Alright, alright, sweet, well thanks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did it cut off again? No. What's that shirt you're wearing? That's one of your shirts. Yeah, it is. Uh, Damien Jim had done this shirt for, for me for a project that we were working on years ago. Oh, that's great. It's a phoenix that he did. He designed it on an iPad like years ago.